This video is brought to you by Blinkist. Hello, I'm Mike Bassich. I'm a professional snowboarder, photographer. This is my latest build, which I call the Mike's Dream Chaser. Diesel Mitsubishi Fuso chassis. In snowboarding, I've got into the competitive part of it, got out of that into the chasing powder part of snowboarding. And that's kind of made me learn a little bit about how to be mobile for the snow. I'm a big fan of living off the grid, done that up at Donner Summit with a little rock cabin. And now I'm kind of back to like, well, I want a little bit of like adventure freedom to be on the road. Everything I've learned over 20 years is what you see behind me right now. I went with the Fuso chassis because I wanted to customize the inside feeling. And what I wanted is not to feel like a car. And all like the Sprinter, all these things that you just buy off the shelf type of thing, you still get this RV feeling. And so that's why I got this, because I knew I was gonna cut half of it off. It fits in a parking spot. It slides out, it folds down. I have beachfront property that feels like you're outside, but you're inside. There's a fireplace inside, so I can actually be inside with everything open, snowing out, and I'm, and I'm warm. If you wanna do something a little like more personal, you really gotta do it yourself, I think. So this is the rig. It's a Mitsubishi Fuso Cantor, 3.0 diesel, six-speed transmission with uh, the Tiptronic, which means it's automatic or stick shift. It's called a cab over vehicle. That meaning the motor's under the cab, which makes this whole front end very flat, which is really good for turning radius, it's a little more bouncier on the suspension because you're sitting on top of the wheels. That's kind of like one of the harder parts with this setup is because it's built to tow a lot of weight. So the suspension's super stiff. The tires help it being a little soft. This and this rotate differently. And they're actually pretty snug because the back of the vehicle actually cut out so you can access the back. It's nice if you just need to take a nap and you're driving far, someone can sleep in the back. There's a whole system behind here in case the water got behind this one, it still drains down. It's a little tricky to do, especially in tight spots like this, because this is already built. This whole thing goes up to get to the motor, so it's, you can still access it, but you need to make it just right to make your weather stripping fit snug. This side unfolds, which they call this a clamshell. Deck folds down, window slides up. A little uh, taco stand maybe at the same time. And then this, this is actually run on a $50 winch, which is great. It comes with a remote. You turn it on and unlatch it here. These shocks here, which any auto store you can go buy, they sell them by the pound of pressure and how long they expand. They're about 100 pounds each to lift the window. You're covered, everything drains properly, the floor is waterproof. You get to park at a river, on the beach, anywhere, and you feel like you're outdoors. And this is one of the better features on the outside of the rig. This is called a Tommy Gate Tuck Under. The Tommy Gate is what goes up and down. This actually tucks under the vehicle so you don't lose your parking ability. You can actually lift about three, 4,000 pounds with this, so if you're hauling a piano or something, it's perfect. Inside, the kitchen is right here, and so this is the slide outside. I made this myself with uh, actuators, which is an electronic hydraulic, runs off 12 volt. Pretty reasonable in price, comes stock with a remote. By naturally doing this, when I was building it, I had the wall up and the counter in, and it was sunny out. And this, this wasn't in yet. I was gonna put wood and the light came through and I, I, I have to make this happen naturally. So I ended up buying plexiglass. There's a liquid that you can weld plexiglass yourself and it's all welded together. It's all waterproof. Kind of how they build fish tanks out of plexiglass. My gas tank's under there along with the death tank is underneath the vehicle now, which I moved that so I can get the bathtub in there. This is super light siding. Behind it is a stuff called ice and water. It's a super adhesive 
rubber waterproofing. And that's wrapped around the whole vehicle. The beauty of that is it doesn't matter what I put on afterwards, it's not gonna change the waterproofing. And so this is actually true rust. It's not any fancy patina, like chemical reaction, it's just rust. And it will rust away at some point, and I could recite it in a couple days with something else, which is great. It changes colors depending on what state you're in because of the minerals in the, in the snow, in the water. We've got solar panels on the roof. This comes out to about 200 watts. I have two six volt batteries hooked up to the 12 volt. The whole thing's a 12 volt system with a power inverter of 750 watts. The roofing is probably the more latest thing I've learned about, which is a pitchethane material, but it's coated with aluminum. It keeps the top really lightweight and you don't have to put a metal roof on it. Super nice. That's the outside. So this is the inside. I would say it's about 90 square feet. With everything moving, it opens up a little bit bigger. Woodworking done by me. It's uh, got a cedar ceiling. Gives a great smell to the place. All the other wood I've milled. I worked with the height a lot because I wanted it not to feel like close to the head, but I didn't want to make it too tall that my height clearance was super crazy. We have the kitchen here, which is a slide out. This is the stove. It actually comes out and you can cook outside if you want. You can bake a small turkey, $200 stove, great purchase. This is, was actually a double sink for 50 bucks. I just cut half of it off and drilled holes and screwed it to the bottom. Put some silicone, done. This faucet's something I really like doing the wall mount. It's a lot easier to clean. The fridge is probably my biggest purchase. This is 12 volt, very efficient, makes ice, pulls like four amps, it's like super low. Drawers are all custom made and they got a little bit of like self-closer there. My water tank is inside. I didn't want to put it under the vehicle for freezing reasons. So 42 gallon water tank under there. That's another big investment. It's about a $300 item to buy for that per gallons. I did that because I wanted enough space to fit my snowmobile inside. And that is why it's kind of built back this way. I can fit a four by eight sheet of plywood in here. That was another goal. On demand hot water heater, 110 bucks. There's two different types. One has a pilot light and the other one has batteries to ignite the spark. It's a lot safer in case it goes out and the propane's still pumping. The on-demand hot water heater goes to the sink and it also goes down here, which this actually comes with it. The water tank comes with this shower head and you actually just kind of turn it on. Turn it on, got hot water. The reason this is set up here is it reaches out to here and right here, it's a bathtub. <laughs> so you imagine sitting in the bathtub with your open view, pretty amazing, especially when you're on the beach in Oregon, you can drive on the beach in Oregon, which is really nice. So uses storage as well for long road trips. And so I try to maximize the space which uh, I got some extra storage. So this is just a diamond plate aluminum. I made a little box. My solar charger is down there. Deep cell batteries are right underneath this. So this is my other storage, which I haven't got around to making the box yet for it. So it's actually, if you want to repair the car, um, or forget your keys, you know. <laughs> but the floor I actually put in a copper wire. So I actually have heated flooring. I haven't hooked it all up, but I have the coil put in if I ever want to do it. That was going to run off the fireplace. Swing it out here. Uh, got an outdoor barbecue. Old fireplace I got from a flea market. And I, I added this so I can actually cook, cook on top. This is something I've learned. They're not made for moving vehicles but they're built for garages that don't have electricity. It is a propane furnace, runs on propane or natural gas. This one's on propane and there's no electricity, none. And it has a thermostat. This goes off when it doesn't need to go on. 
a lot of things just go high and low and always stay going. So I could be gone for two weeks and leave this. If I'm in a freezing environment, it'll stay at 40, 40 degrees. So that, that is a great investment. This is about a $600 item. You vent it outside, the hot air rises and dries out everything, your clothes or whatever. So it's, it's a really nice setup. It's the smallest one I've found that they make that doesn't take electricity at all. The thermostat I put over by the bed. So when I'm sleeping and I wake up, just turn it up. It takes about 10 minutes and you can get out of bed and it's now 80 degrees instead of 42 or whatever. The beauty about building your own walls is you get to make it wide enough to sleep this way. I made it seven feet. It's plenty of room, plus a little bit of cubby hole. And you can sleep too. I got shelves underneath. There's a couple over here. And I've got shelves for the TV for movies. There's a DVD player built into the TV. I found this curtain to block off the front, which is pretty nice since I like the snow. But I, yeah, I slide that out and you can get in the front. Don't have to go outside to start the car. When you're ready for dinner, you slide things over. This little guy slides up. And you slide that off. And you got yourself a little dining table. Locks in place, but you can, you know, hang out, have coffee, or work on the computer. The biggest key for all of this, whatever you build, make it easy to do. If it's not easy, you won't use it. The fan is actually something I'm pretty proud of. It's a cooling computer fan. And the reason I did that is it's the quietest fan I could find. That's 12 volt. Most 12 volt fans are pretty noisy. So cooling fan, 12 bucks. Just hook it up with a fuse, you're, you're good to go. Do something fun. Do something really cool. Do something weird. Like everybody wants to have fun. You know, so if you build something unique and fun, there's actually a lot more people that will just show up and start helping. They don't want to get paid. They just want to be a part of something cool. So you meet someone at the hardware store and you're buying a weird part. You're like, yeah, it's for this. You're like, oh, well, I want to check it out. You know, and before you know it, that person is now your welder teaching you how to weld or, you know, a mechanic going over the motor part. And you start to understand, like, they're really excited because they don't get to do this at home. And they just want to be somewhere that is a new experience. You kind of like move in a way and you start to learn how to get sponsors. It, it draws energy, it draws attention. The biggest question I've always heard from people is like, how do I do this or that? And they think doing this or you know, something on this level or any level, you have to figure it all out before you do it. You're not going to know. I don't know. Nobody knows exactly how it's all going to turn out. And that's part of the, the fun, the fun part. You know, it's called it failing, you know, like you do it and you fix it and you go back and repeat it. And one, before you know it, you, you're a welder. You're like, oh, I learned how to weld on a car that I didn't before. And that's part of your knowledge of reward. But yeah, my biggest advice is just, just go for it. Nothing's perfect. And it's, it's up to you to kind of make it perfect for what you need it to be. We're all busy and out here hustling, and so it can be hard to carve out time to sit down and learn more. Our smartphones, they're an amazing tool, but social media is addictive and it's time consuming. And even if you think you don't have enough time to read a book, Blinkist is an app that I recommend that makes it all possible. It can take ages to read a book, but Blinkist takes the best insights and the need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books, condenses them down to just 15 minutes, and you can choose to either read them or listen. I would recommend that you start with the classic Vagabonding by Ralph Potts or The Polymath by Wakis Ahmed, which I just discovered the other day. The first hundred people to go to Blinkist.com forward slash floor get unlimited access for seven days and you also get 25% off if you choose to go with the full membership. So click the link below and start downloading Vagabonding by Ralph Potts today.